Hello and welcome to this last video, this last tutorial in the Godot game programming series, the first one on the channel. In this video, we will refine our platform game and just add a few simple features. You can see the final project that you can download on GitHub and the character can now flip when we press left and right. It can double jump, but it can't jump to infinity and beyond. Jumping onto the script tab, let me run you through the main changes. First of all, I increased the maximum speed, acceleration, deceleration, jump force and gravity. All that to make the character more reactive. One problem with the low acceleration and deceleration we had before was that the character would slide on the ground, a bit as if it was walking on ice. You don't want that in a platform game. You want to give the player maximum control. Actually, in lots of games, the designers decide to just strip down the acceleration and deceleration, and instead, whenever you press the left or right arrow key, the character moves at maximum speed, and as soon as you release the key, it stops. It depends on the type of game you're doing. If you are making something like Ori and the Blind Forest or a Rayman game where you have all kinds of slopes and you want the movement to feel natural, you can leave some acceleration and deceleration. I made a video on the design of Ori and the Blind Forest, link in the description below. Check it out for a breakdown of the game's design. Then I added a jump count and a maximum jump count. That's why the character can double jump now and it can't jump more than that. And uh, I also added a maximum full speed. That's just to make the game future proof. If you add vertical levels, well, the character in the previous version could fall at infinite speed. It would keep accumulating speed. So uh, we are limiting that with those two lines of code. And that's about it. With that, we would just need to add what? Collectibles or something like that. And we would have a nice small little game that gets us started with the game engine. We'll start with the jump and the first thing we have to do is to limit the maximum fall speed because right now we are only adding some gravity to the speed variable and resetting it whenever it, the character collides with something. But if you have a very long fall in the game, the character will keep accelerating to infinity. We need to add a new constant and I'll call it max fall speed. I decided to set it to around, yeah, 1400, should do the trick. And then it's quite straightforward. You can see how we change the speed X and then we clamp it. We're going to do something similar with speed Y. After we're done adding gravity, we are going to just limit it because it's only when the character is going down that we want to limit its speed, not when it's jumping. If we want to add a bumper later in the game, we don't want to limit the jump speed, right? So uh, we're going to add a condition if speed.y, so that's the y component on the, of the speed vector, is greater than max fall speed, we set it back to max fall speed. That's it. And now we are done. The speed Y will be limited to maximum fall speed. Next up, let's limit the number of jumps the character can take. And that's fairly simple as well. We're going to add a variable where we will count the number of jumps the player did since the last time the character touched the ground. So let's add a jump count variable at the top of our script and set it to zero by default. We'll also define a constant called maximum jump count. That will be the maximum amount of jumps the character can do. So you can set it to one if you only want the player to jump once and you can set it to two if you want to have a double jump. Also a little trick, if you set that to a variable, you can have later on in the game a kind of bonus that lets the character jump twice or you could have that as an upgrade in your game. Now we want to work with that jump count in a few places. First of all in the input function. We want to check that the character hasn't jumped more than twice or more than max jump count. So if 
jump count is lower than max jump count and the player presses jump, then he can still jump and we will add one to the jump count. Next up, we need to reset our jump count when the uh, player touches the ground. And we do that in our collision event. So we could just say jump count is equal to zero. The problem is uh, this will be true. This will happen every time the character touches the ground, but also when it touches a wall. I can showcase that in the game. When I'm sliding against the wall, I can jump plenty of times. However, if I jump in the in middle air, I'm pressing the up arrow many times and the character only jumps twice. We need to check when the character is touching the ground. In our simple game, there's an easy way to do that. I told you about collision normals in the last video. Well, the ground has a normal that's going to be pointing up when the character collides with it. So we just have to check if the collision normal is pointing up. To do that, we add a new condition and we have to check that normal is a vector two with the coordinates zero minus one. That's how you define a vector pointing up. And now thanks to that condition, the character can only jump twice, even if it's colliding with a wall. As far as the vector coordinates are concerned, zero just means the uh, vector is not pointing to the right or to the left. And minus one is the up direction, because as you remember, the y-axis is positive downwards and it's negative upwards. Also, a normal vector is what we call normalized. That is to say, it will only have values between zero and one for both its x and its y components. We have one thing left to do. That is to make the character flip to the left or look to back towards the right when we press the left and right arrow keys. So this we're going to control with the character sprite. If you select the sprite node, you'll see a property called flip H. When you click on it, when you activate it, the character sprite flips over. That's what we're going to use in this basic game example to make the character flip. Back to the script tab, we need to do a few things. Because our script is attached to the player, we have to tell Godot that we want to access its child, the sprite itself. We can do that with the getNode function. It will allow us to navigate the node tree and to pick a specific node and store it in a variable. We're going to create a new variable and we'll call it character, no, sprite node. There we go. And then we cannot grab the sprite node at that point. We're just going to make an empty variable for now. In order to access another node, we have to ensure that it has been created first. So Godot is going to create every node in the scene one after the other when you launch the game on your computer. It's going to run the code that's up here to initialize the variable before it's done instantiating all of the nodes. So we can only access other nodes when everything is ready. That's why you have a ready function down there. This is a safe place to grab other nodes. So we're going to set our sprite node variable in the ready function. To get the sprite node, we have to use the get node function and we get nice auto completion. So you see that uh, Godot gives us the sprite and we're just going to type that. The get node function works in a simple way. You just have to write the path to the node in quotes. And uh, in that case, the path is just the node's name because it's a direct child of our player node. We can change the character's orientation in two different places. First of all, where we are handling the input. So we can directly make calls to the setFlipH function uh, where, when we are checking if the player is pressing the left or right arrow keys. Otherwise, we can also do it down there because this condition 
check is actually asking the question, is the character changing direction? Um, I think it's simpler to do it in the input part. So that's where we'll do it. We can use the sprite node variable. It's storing the sprite object or a reference to it. So we can call functions using that variable or methods rather. So we'll add a dot and we'll call the set flip h method. If the character is going to the left, we want the sprite to flip over because when it's not flipped by default, it's looking to the right. We'll copy that line of code and down there when the uh, right arrow key is pressed or the D key, we want the flip H attribute to be set back to false. And now we have our working final game. That's it for this tutorial series. I love this engine. I was really interested in it since version one was released. Um, but you know, I had a lot of work to do with Krita tutorials and still now I'm, you know, I have a ton of stuff to do. So I'd like to know what you thought of the series and what you'd like to see next. Not necessarily with Godot, but with tutorials related to game design, game art, all the things I'd like to cover on the channel. And I know this series was short, but I just have too much work right now. Uh, I talked with um, uh, Aiken, Remy, and uh, the Godot community at the Godot convention where I was, and Fosdem in Brussels. And I'm doing the first Kickstarter campaign around Godot. I have to prepare that. I have to finish the Krita training series. That's why in the next few weeks, the videos will be a bit simpler. I'm going to do some live streaming, I think. But I'm going to put up a little form, some questions to know what you guys want on the channel. And yeah, I'm going to stop there for this video and I think I'll, I'll post another one pretty soon. You can find the full project in the video description. I'll leave it on GitHub and uh, see you in the next one.